Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech M4A4 Sherman tank. Since the last video update, progress has been made to the model suspension and the model suspension has been assembled, modified, as well as installed. We will be going over these modifications and features in this video. As for the model's wheels, the wheels on the Armatech Sherman break down as follows. You have the wheel itself, which is comprised out of a CNC aluminum billet. You have a rubber vinyl t rubber tire. And you have two small plastic nylon or PVC bushings. As you can see from the wheel itself, the wheel is has only one face of detailing for the ex design for the exterior portion of the model while to save weight the interior is just hollowed out via the CNC machine. The bushing locations are pre-drilled into the road wheels and the road wheels come ready to assemble out of the box. All you have to do is insert the bushings, add the rubber tire, and the wheel is then ready for installation. One thing that differs the current M4A4 Firefight release compared to the earlier M4A3 release is the fact that the wheels are made out of CNC billet on the current Firefly, while on the original Sherman release, they were made out of casted aluminum. The two wheels have the exact same type detailing and same type of wheel represented. They both was only had their phase detailing only and a small cavity in the back and the wheels both of them were representing the pressed sheet metal road wheel which was very common on Sherman tanks. Another thing that's interesting and of note is that when Armor Tech first announced the Sherman kit back in 2005-2006 their prototype was made and the prototype had CNC aluminum road wheels which looked identical to this one here with the mill marks. When they went to the actual kit, they were casted. However, it's interesting that they went back to the CNC road wheel for this current release. The one advantage about these ArmorTech wheels is that they are solid. These things are extremely robust, extremely rugged, and will take just about anything that you could throw at it. Probably these things could even take a bomb. That's how rigid the, the wheel design is. One part of the kit, road wheel, that is missing or is omitted from the kit are the grease plug wells. On these M4 Shermans to lubricate the center axle there are two wells that are pressed into the sheet metal face that have two zerk fittings which allows you to connect the grease gun to thoroughly lubricate the center axle. Instead of trying to mill away some of the aluminum to create the wells I went ahead and created a resin detail face which inserts into the road wheel. Now this resin detail face serves two functions. First it gives you the well detail and it also since it plugs up the back portion of the wheel gives you the completed road wheel and replaces any missing detail that was there from the hollow space. Here we go, the piece installed on a completed road wheel, and you can see the details now added. Also included with the road wheel set are the little rivet, dome headed rivets, which on the real Sherman help connect the rubber tire to the rubber wheel rim. To mount the road wheels to the suspension, Instead of mounting it on the kit design way with the kit details facing towards the viewer, I'm going to go ahead and insert it reversed with the resin plug details facing towards the viewer. This does two functions. First, it gives you the better detailing of the, of the oil grease wells facing outward. And for the reverse side of the tank, you now have some wheel detail that wasn't present on the original kit. As we recall, the original kit has just the hollow space CNC'd into the road wheel. With the detail face added, I can now have the inside portion of the, of the wheel well with its detailing 
so that when the viewer or if I take a lower angle of the tank and you see the under hull, you will be able to get a glimpse of the lower detailing, which also aids in that my tank has the under hull detailing on the lower hull. This set, this detail set here is only designed to be used on Armor Tech tanks. It can be used on their Sherman Firefly and should be able to be used on their earlier production M4A3. The set itself is found on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. In addition of having the Zerk fitting wells molded into the insert, the Zerk fittings themselves are not molded in. Instead, to install them, there's a small little indentation that is present in the casting. You simply drill that out with a Dremel and you insert the supplied Zerk fittings into the new holes. Another feature that the sets have is that the way they are designed and the way they are cast and molded, there is no sanding that is required to the rear portion here of the plate. What this does is that because of this feature, all of the fittings will have the exact same height and will not need to be adjusted per the wheel. You simply remove it off of the sprue and you install to the wheel and all of the wheels will have the identical height. To install the piece, you simply add a rim of glue around the edge of the road wheel. You add a little bit of around the rim. And you add some glue to the rear portion here of the wheel. I'm using basic super glue. However, other epoxies can be used in its place. Once the glue is added, the piece simply drops in and the wheel is now ready for the next step. You simply allow the super glue to adhere to the metal. Once it adheres, the piece is on with extreme permanence and will not come off very easily. In addition to the road wheel faces, another piece of detail that comes with the set is the return roller fastener detail. On the ArmorTech model, the return roller mount is fabricated out of three components. You have a pressed sheet steel frame along with a bent aluminum rigidity strip and then everything is fastened together via hex bolts or allen wrenches like this one here. This here on the back side of the unit is what the piece looks like as stock. On my suspension I wanted to give it some more detail so what I did was I replaced the cap screws with two countersunk allen screws. The allen screws are the exact same size and dimensions as the kit required or kit supplied cap screws. In addition to doing that this gives me a nice flat surface for me to add the fastener detail which on the real Sherman is what holds together the return roller shaft to the return roller mount. On the real Sherman a single bolt on either side is how this is facilitated. This bit of detailing is missing on the Armor Tech kit and to add it I simply created a rest and drop in detail set and it just go ahead and glues on directly to the Armor Tech kit. Once the piece is glued on I simply covered it with the bodywork. Now in case you don't want to remove the cap screws with the countersink or countersunk options. This is what the set looks like here if it was just placed over the cap screws. It's a little bit bigger however the detail is still there. Another way to install the piece in case you so desire is to simply remove the fastener head and mounting nub off of the base and then simply glue it directly in the middle of the two cap screws. That's another option that the piece could be installed as. Here goes the suspension without the piece of detail added. And here goes the piece fitted to a sample suspension set. And here goes the piece installed to a unit that had its bodywork applied. As you can see, the bodywork is just simple, some glazing or spot putty that has been smeared into the gap and crevice to plug up any gaps. Now, you could either leave it slightly rough, like it is here, which will blend in with the detailing in that, as I mentioned earlier, the suspension unit, this whole piece here, is made out of a single cast unit on the real Sherman tank. So leaving it 
slightly rough will blend in better with my cast texture. Or you could hit it with some sandpaper and sand it to a nice smooth finish, whichever way the builder desires. As for the return, the Sherman Tanks return roller, the Armor Tech kits, both the 2006 version as well as the Firefly, utilize a hard plastic machined wheel. The wheel itself is the correct size and does have the basic detailing of the two plug holes that are drilled into the surface. The wheels also have a small little burr on the end. This is left over from the, sh the machining process and is a simple removal with just a regular exacto or any type of hobby knife. As you can see, it's just been the bird. These pieces here are very basic in detailing, however, function very well. As for the detailing that was added to the return roller, we'll start here with the retaining nut. This retaining nut here is actually recycled from another set that I have listed on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. That set is designed as a detail upgrade for the stock Vantex and Fuyan M4 Sherman tank suspension, which is found on their 1-6 scale Sherman series that they have. The set includes these two resin little discs, and these discs are designed to replicate that of the securing nut that is found on these road wheels. To mount the nut to the road wheel, I had to first bore out a small little hole that's the same diameter of the nut. The purposes of this is that it, once mounted, the nut is totally flush with the side of the wheel. This is not only present on the real vehicle, but what it serves is that on the model, once it's fit, affixed to the roller mount, the roller mount will have now no chances of it snagging or even any debris that's kicked up by the track of snagging these small little delicate pieces here and thus knocking them off and breaking them. Moving away from the retaining nut, we'll go to the Zerk fittings. The Zerk fitting wells were a simple addition to fabricate and all that was needed to do was to drill a larger hole into these two portions here of the roller and then with a sixteenth of an inch drill bit, drill two more holes. Then you take a simple wire brad insert into the two smaller holes so that's nice and flush with the road wheel and the procedure is complete. After the tank is painted these two little zerk fittings here will be painted red as they are found on the real vehicle. Moving our way to the plug detailing like I mentioned in an earlier video or an earlier scene the road wheel has these positions pre-drilled into the road wheel. This is a nice feature in that it saves time in having to do measurements and crunch numbers to find out where these holes go and how big to make them. As for plugging them up, I simply cut some sections of 532nd brass rod and the brass rod just simply gets inserted into the holes as such. Once glued in, they will stay at their proper height and we'll have the appearance that you see here on the completed road wheel. One nice feature of the swing arms that ArmorTech included is the slide pads. The slide pads consist of two brass channels that get bolted to the swing arm via two countersunk Allen screws. Now, the purpose of the slide pads is that the, when the, the way the H frame on the Shermans connects to the swing arm, it acts as a track and it keeps everything nice and lined up while the swing arm is actuating. Now, Originally, on the first generation Armatech Sherman kits, the slide pads were not included with the kit. They were something that had to be custom made by the end user. The slide pads had the blister here, but no channel like we have here machined in. Now, ironically that the original Armatech kit did have the fitting holes for the slide pads that were pre-drilled and pre-threaded into the swing arm itself. But the piece wasn't milled away and it was something that was apparently a carryover from their prototype. Apparently the Armatech Sherman prototype did have the slide pads, but it didn't end up on the production run for that generation. Just like with all the other parts on the suspension, you also need to prime the vertical volute springs. The, now, ArmorTech, what's unique about the kit is that they actually supply you with real volute springs for the Sherman suspension. All, as far as I know, I believe they're the only ones to actually do this. All the other Sherman kits on the market either have a static suspension like the Dragon Sherman, or they have a coiled spring that suspends the model like on the Vantec or Fuyan M4 Sherman tank series that they have. 
if, if you want to see what they look like, you can go ahead and go to my Vantech video review where I showcase the Vantech suspension in more detail. Over on the ArmorTech, the springs are made out of real spring steel and are very stiff and very strong and hold up the, the weight of the vehicle very well. I know this from their early production M4A3 that I've built in the past. The springs themselves uh, come in a in a bubble wrap bag. However, to protect them, they are covered in oil. So before you can go ahead and start cleaning the, or before you can start priming the pieces and getting them into their paint, it's a good idea to get all the oil and residue off of them. And to do that, I just soak the springs in a bucket full of turpentine or paint thinner, and just swirl them for a few minutes and then afterwards make sure you get them nice and dry. Once they're dried off you could blow some air on them or rub them with a towel or what have you. Once they're dried off it is then good to get them into primer into paint. And here go two samples of the suspension that are assembled. The suspensions themselves have gone through quite a bit of an extensive redetailing process to further improve what the Armor Tech kit already gives you. The ArmorTech bogey system is very strong and is very durable and is the correct shape and size. The only thing that was done to the bogeys to help increase their accuracy was just some surface detailing as well as a couple little fixtures that were added to the ArmorTech system. Here we have some still images of the bogeys while they were being modified and assembled. The biggest modification that was made to the bogies themselves was the addition of the th top fastener wells, which are located on the bogey top. The top portion here of these suspensions on all Sherman tanks have two wells on the, on the top part here. The purpose of these wells is for fasteners to help affix it to the hull. Along with the two on top, there's fasteners running along the side of the bogey, and that's how the bogey system attaches to the tank. On the model, the ArmorTech kit did not have these wells present, and because of their location, they're not very visible. However, I felt that adding it would give my model a little bit more detailing, and so I went ahead and with the mill, and I milled away the recesses on each of the bogies for the necessary locations. The rivet and bolt detail that you see on the inside are just for detail only and serve no structural purpose and it is just there just for again detail. Moving our way from the top wells takes us to the side of the bogey housing. If we notice I milled away two sections of the bogey in these locations here. This is present on the real vehicle and serve the same function on my model in that they help me position the fasteners into the model a lot easier. The bogies themselves are very similar to that of the original 2005 Sherman M4A3 release. They assemble the same way and have pretty much all of the same components. The only real difference is that on the 2005 Sherman release, the main bogey housing, this large unit here, is made out of a single solid cast aluminum unit, while on this Firefly release, they were actually made out of CNC aluminum. The CNC unit is very good and it's probably stronger than the original unit, and just again, just some surface detailing was added. Another difference between the 2011 version of the Sherman is that on the 2011 version, ArmorTech went ahead and added the two recessed holes for the spring tension caps. On the real Sherman tank, to compress the suspension unit when servicing the bogey housing, you would remove these two caps here via a wrench, and inside there would be a very long bolt. You would tighten that bolt, and that bolt would put tension on the main housing spring. This is so that if you t when you're servicing the vehicle and you take off this bottom plate here, the whole unit, since it's vertical spring volute, doesn't shoot out of the bottom of the tank and possibly causing in injury. So by tightening this bolt here, it will prevent the, the spring tension from firing off the bottom of the tank. 
like I mentioned, this here is as per the kit original, and no mods were done to this. This small little detail here is a nice feature that is present on this version of the Sherman release. In addition to the retention caps, a Another mod that was made by Armor Tech to the design was that of the swing arms themselves. On the original Sherman release, the swing arms are identical to the ones on this release in that they were both made out of CNC aluminum. The only difference is that if we notice on this version here, there are two blocks of aluminum that are milled into the swing arm cases. The purpose of this is very similar to what the real one has in that it prevents the swing arms from dipping downward if I'm holding the onto the suspension piece. If we notice, I can hold on to it and the suspension is pinned to this to this height here. This is good in case the track were to pop off or if the vehicle were to crest over some kind of a ridge, it will prevent the swing arm from over dipping, thus potentially causing problems. The original Armor Tech release did not have this. However, it was never I found it never to be an issue on my other Armor Tech Sherman. However, the addition of this piece is also a very nice feature and shows just how Armor Tech imp constantly improves their product over time. As for the swing arm, the unit that Armor Tech modeled is that of the solid swing arm unit. The, the Sherman, during its VVSS configuration, had two types and two styles of swing arms. They had the solid swing arm, which was a carryover from the M3 Lee, and then they also had a version of the swing arm which had two oval wrench slits in these locations here. The purpose of the wrench slits was to get access to the fastener that helps hold on the slide plate which is connected to the swing arm. The version with the ovals came a little bit later on in the Sherman production run. As for some of the face detail modifications that I made to the swing arm and to the whole bogey housing are as follows. And it, besides the road wheels, which I mentioned earlier, the model, all of the surfaces of the swing arm were covered with casting texture. If we notice, there are two styles of Sherman bogies. One style here has a split line, which would have been present on the mold. And another variation of the VVSS is seamless. The mold patterns probably lined up a lot easier, from, depending on which foundry casted these parts, will reflect on not only the seam, but also the different type of cast numbers. This feature is what makes modeling the Sherman very interesting, in that you could have several different variations of the same component, and no two can look alike. Also, which was added, besides the cast texture to all of the components, if they pop up here in the film, is also the casting and foundry marks. In a previous video, I described the type of numbers and plastruck letters that I use for the foundry marks. Foundry marks are found on just about every single part on the, on the bogey housing, from the swing arm, to the H-frame, to the bogey housing itself, and even the swing arm, or the my mistake, the return roller mount. Another modification that was made to the swing arm was that of the return roller brace. On the Sherman tank, the Sherman utilized a single housing for the bogies, which could be which are ambidextrous and can be used on either side. The version on the left hand side have the return roller on this part of the housing and on the reverse side would have the same roller mount on this side of the housing. Because of that, tapped holes are present four tapped holes are present on each side of the bogey housing. Since the return roller is in this location here, this part will be visible on the model. Now when I was working on the pieces I actually went ahead and added the slits on both sides of the v on both sides of the housing as they would be on the real vehicle, thus giving for greater detail rendition. In addition to having these two slits here, I also added the elevated slits for the skid rail. The skid rail was not flush mounted flush to the housing, instead was elevated on a small little brace. The small little brace, as well as the two slot, the side pieces, are fabricated out of sheet styrene and are then blended and fused into the housing via the bodywork. In addition to adding the face detail texture, 
I also went ahead and modified the H-frame. The H-frame on the Armortech unit is very strong and very robust. And to help improve on the detail, I went ahead and milled away this small little portion here of the H-frame. Once that little portion was removed, I went ahead and inserted a small brass fastener into the mount permanently. On the real Sherman tank, this little bump down is present and the fastener actually supports, actually mounts to a small little roller, which would in turn roll on this little slide plate here, making the piece roll a lot smoother. The actual roller itself was not needed for the build as the suspension operates flawlessly with just the Armor Tech stock system. Another area of improvement that was made to the Armor Tech Sherman model was that of how the return roller affixes to the return roller bracket. On the first Sherman release this was done by two hex bolts which would have been affixed in these locations here. The, the issue with the hex bolts that some people encountered is that when the track rides over the return roller sometimes debris or even the tooth itself can hit the hex bolt here and can and can possibly cause issues. Armortech addressed the issue by replacing the hex bolt with a button head screw. As you notice the button head screw is a lower profile and is smooth in texture so that if anything hits it it just simply just rolls over it. Since the Sherman utilized hex bolts on the real tank, I needed to keep that hex bolt detail present on my model. So I replaced the button head screw on the visible side with that of a hex bolt rather than using the button head screw. From my experience with the Sherman, I've never had a problem of the track making contact with this piece. And if I do have this issue emerge, I can closely remove some material carefully with that of a Dremel if the need arises. I'll have more on that as the build progresses. One final improvement that was made to the Armor Tech model was how the road wheels affix to their main axle. The Armor Tech tank has the exact same type of assembly system when it comes to the rods as it does on a real Sherman. The swing arm here is pivoted on these two hardened steel rods while these road wheels themselves are affixed to the swing arm via a rod that is threaded on both ends. All the pieces are CNC'd out of steel and are very strong. On the original Armor Tech tank, there was just a simple hex bolt which was used to affix the wheel on either side of the axle. On this 2011 version, the design was improved by replacing the standard hex bolt with that of a nylock. The nylock bolt is a very nice addition and will prevent the wheel from ever getting loose. While I'm on the axle, all of the axles on the model, including the main swing arm axles, the, the road wheel axles, as well as the return roller axle, have been lubricated via grease. The grease ensures that the wheels will spin nice and smoothly. They also help when installing the road wheels as the unit will simply just slide right into its proper place. And on top of that, the last benefit that adding the grease does is that it protects the steel axles from rust and corrosion over time. Also, if we can notice, I went ahead and airbrushed the weathering on the road wheels before the assembly or the installation of the whole bogey unit. The weathering was airbrushed on both sides of the road wheel, and the purpose of which is similar to that I do on my German tanks. The reason why I added the airbrushing now is because once the model is complete, it just it's a little bit difficult to get into these road wheels, especially with the main swing arm in the way. So I went ahead and airbrushed it now while I had advantage while the, the units were not installed to the swing arms. In addition to painting the road wheels with their weathering, the, if you notice, the model's base coat has been thoroughly applied to all surfaces of the suspension, both all the swing arms, the H-frame, and all the other little fixings. This is because, and this is also a standard feature that I do on all of my Sherman builds, because one thing about Sherman tanks is that their bogies have lots of little nooks and crannies that are very easily overlooked when painting the unit fully assembled. This is not only true in 1 6 scale, but even in 1 35th scale. So what I always do before assembly, I prime as well as 
thoroughly coat the piece in its base coat via spray gun. Once the piece is thoroughly painted, you will not have to worry about any missed areas once the model is built. While installing the suspension, there's something important to keep in mind. And that is that the way the hull is, is assembled, the suspension is an integral part to the model's hull integrity. When I was assembling the hull, I went ahead and for these bottom two holes here, I added the fasteners. These fasteners are not only do they hold the bottom portion of the bogey onto the hull, but on the inside of the tank, it's where the bottom hull plate bends upward via a tab and is secured to the hull via the same two bolts. When I was assembling the hull, in my first video, you'll see that I mentioned a lot of Loctite use for all the hull fasteners. These are the only bolts that, one assembly, I did not use the Loctite on because they need to be removable at this stage here in order to affix the suspension. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're removing these bolts, to do them when you undo the bolts when you're installing the suspension unit. If you remove all the bolts at once, obviously nothing is really holding the lower plate on and the whole lower plate can either fall out or can push in on you if the tank is sitting on its lower hull plate, thus causing installation of the suspension to be a lot more difficult than it needs to be. The best way to avoid it is you remove the two when you get to the suspension piece that you're going to install. And here goes the suspension fully affixed to the vehicle. Like I mentioned before, the suspension mounts to the side hull via fasteners that are positioned on either side of the bogey. This is as per the real vehicle, and once installed are very strong and will put up with the use of the tank when it's operating. Now, because of the design of these bogies, the area to install the fasteners is a very tight and cramped place. However, with the aid of a needle nose plier, you're able to slip the nuts onto the fasteners to go ahead and secure them to the hull. It is highly recommended to use Loctite on the fasteners so that to avoid any possibility of the bolts rattling loose on you while the tank is in motion. One thing to keep of note is that once the suspension is added to the model, the weight be increases tremendously. Prior to the installation of the wheels, the naked hull weighed approximately 30 to 40 pounds. With the wheels on, the weight is now closer to 100 pounds. This is important to keep in mind in case you are working on your tank and you need to maneuver it around your workshop. Once the weight starts increasing, the maneuverability becomes a lot, might become a lot less for you. In addition to completing the model suspension, I was also able to fabricate and install the tank's rear mud, mud flaps or fenders. These rear fenders are a relatively new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line and are fabricated out of sheet steel and are all soldered together. They are fixed to the tank via fasteners that mount in through the bottom of the sponson. These fenders are common on early war Sherman tanks as well as not only this M4A4, but also would be a feasible addition to add to the M4 Sherman from Viper, which is another 1.6 scale Sherman that is on the 1.6 scale market. These fenders were actually installed prior to the installation of the suspension because of the their location. Once the rear idler wheel gets installed, it will be difficult to go ahead and install the fasteners and to drill the holes into the sponson panel. So these pieces were installed prior to the installation of all these parts due to greater ease of getting access to the sponson plate. And that concludes this project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech M4A4 Sherman tank. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.